thank you all for coming and it's really, really fascinating for us being here. There are some more people from Prezi here. And I mean this in a really Dutch way, very straight way. This is not like small talk. It's really nice that, that you guys are here and you're interested in our little story. Um, so I will talk about creativity. First of all, um, I'm one of the co-founders of Prezi. I've been experimenting and came in, coming up with the concept like a decade ago. And I am not a presentation expert. So <laughs> I will intentionally make a lot of mistakes like turning at the screen, reading and these kind of things because I want to focus on the creativity aspect now, but I will try my best. And it's not really a secret, but I will frame it as a secret because secrets are really exciting and maybe it gives us a nicer experience. So basically it's two things I'm going to talk about. Um, Prezi and what this whole thing is and why I think it makes you creative. And then actually I will talk also about a little bit about our company because we use some of these methods outside of presenting and they are working really well for us and that might be interesting for you. So let's start with the heady statement. I think Prez is a new medium, it's a new format basically and it simplifies the creative process and it helps people to become more visual. Now maybe you believe this, maybe you don't, but let's look at first why, why would you at all be interested in getting more creative. So. Um, there is a very clear change happening and it always happened, this is nothing new. You don't remember, neither do I, but when machines came by in the industrial revolution, suddenly the most successful humans were not the ones who were the strongest, but the smartest, you know. We could use machines to lift the heavy things and it wasn't up to us to lift the heavy things anymore. This is a very old thing, but what is happening nowadays, which is actually much more uh, shocking, I would say, that we spent the last century basically in education learning how to remember data, memorize things, which has been really, really essential to do anything. But, you know, since the internet and data access came about, it's actually very easy to access data. Basically, all humanity's knowledge in your pocket when you browse Wikipedia. This is insane if you think about it. Yet, it's too much, so you don't know what to do with it. And this is actually, at the same time, a very exciting thing because this means that we don't have to focus that much on memorizing stuff. We can actually focus more on creating, combining things. And this is not just for leisure or because it's more interesting. What is also happening that, you know, the success we have as a species on this planet, we are transforming the fate of this planet. We are changing Earth. And it's really essential that we develop the ability to envision the future and plan it and work towards a future that we like. We cannot just sit back and just, you know, remember data all day. <laughs> so, and many of you, you know, this is nothing new. And many of you who work with uh, ideation or brainstorming or whatever, you know these things that ideas need space, you can use whiteboard post-its, all these things to, to develop them. Um, yet, if you think about it, not everybody does it in their jobs. This is not a very common thing. And I will try to argue now in like 10 minutes why I think Prezi is a tool that is trying people to get there. So first of all, why is this space thing there at all? Um, the first notion that happens with uh, creativity and, and envisioning the future is that you have to see things to understand them. This is a very simple thing, yet many times we forget it. Even in, even in many languages, maybe in Dutch too, I don't know, but in English, German, even the word understanding, it's a lot about a special relation. Feste, I understand, I stand in a distance, I, I get the big picture, it, it helps me to conceive what is really happening. And uh, just in the first few minutes, I will actually show some things that I've been doing before I started Prezi that maybe shows you that I used to be creative and playful, and they're also really strongly to this point. And I used to be actually a media artist. I wasn't like a business starting person. And here's one example that is about seeing things and then understanding it, creating joy that helps you to understand a very complex piece of information. This was built like a decade ago with two Swedish friends of mine and we built this really nice system where you could watch your brain. It was like a museum exhibit, right? An interactive exhibit. And the, the spatial data of the brain is actually a really complex piece of information, but by making it in a you know, very playful, simple, accessible interaction, and that you can see it, the whole experience becomes much more immersive and you like it and you know, you start to enjoy the whole thing. Then another example which is related I would say is um, 
Wi-Fi. <laughs> Still talking about why it is important to see things to understand something. So Wi-Fi, internet, radio is something that is very obviously very pervasive today. Or 3G is the same technology, and we use it. And if we don't have good signal, we don't have reception. It sucks. It's like bad weather. It's, it really affects our daily lives. At the same time, it's something mysterious. Nobody understands. It's just like radio waves or little dots in our phone. The reality is. Um, it's actually a very simple physical phenomenon that is not very different from light, just on a different wavelength. So with, again, two friends of mine, when I used to be an artist, I worked very hard with them that we can see how Wi-Fi looks like. And I just show you. This was the low-tech camera that we built that helps you to see Wi-Fi. And this, this is our home in, in Budapest, and these are the different networks that come into our home. This is called Dadam, Mesco, etc., etc. <coughs> And actually, this is very silly, but by doing this project and being able to take pictures of Wi-Fi, I became really good at remote controls and door openers and all these radio gadgets that you use. I can use them from a really long distance. Now, you know, this is really funny, but this is all like custom-built things that help you to understand things. But, of course, the goal is that people get creative. So, first, I was also looking at things that are that involve people to create spaces, and. And I really tried it on the hard way first, <laughs> and then I hope we will get into the simple way. So here is one more experiment that I thought that it's actually fantastic to create spaces, so let's build this strange machine that helps people doing that. And uh, uh, with a Swedish hacker, Bank Schelein, a friend of mine, we built this system that is using a really simple idea. Oh, I left my phone in my... <laughs> but basically, if you take a mirror and you rotate it around, different colors, different... Brightnesses will reflect in all of your eyes. And if I create an array of such mirrors, I can actually compose a screen that is using the changing colors of the world around it to create images. And hence, you can create these images, you can move around, etc. It's pretty simple. Here's a little you know, proof of concept image for this idea. And so we built it from car mirrors. This is how it looks, and it was really fun. very low resolution screen, but you know, it creates quite a joy if you're there and play with it. Now, the thing with this is it was fun, 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 but it was still very abstract and conceptual. So, to get to our goal, we need something much simpler that you can create spaces, but it doesn't require a lot of artists working, building strange machines. And let's look at this simple model now. Most of the prezzies look like this. It's small and large things, circles. This is very typical. And then this is how you also create them. You create small and large things and you put some circles around it. Now, the truth is that you actually, when you look at the mathematical space of this, if you will take a camera and move it around in a space where these words are put in, you know, 3D, if you wouldn't rotate the camera, it would look exactly the same. And this is actually not just because 3D is cool, this is interesting because orienting yourself in space, orienting yourself in in, you know, in the experience of spatial being is just so much more uh, intuitive. It's something we all know, it's something we all learn when we are children. It's actually much simpler than understanding textual information. We also try to measure this, try to get to the point that actually when people see prezzies, they, they get a much more spatial experience, they can use their spatial memory to remember the data, etc. Now, I'm going to tell you the secret now. <laughs> it, so the secret is not at the end of the presentation. It's, it's coming right now. And if you only came for the secret, then you can have a coffee. <laughs> um, and it's in the middle there. It's, it's just like five steps away. So the first of all, I want to argue now why, why all this fuss about... So I talked, I started with this strange thing, creativity, etc. Then I went to these seemingly completely unrelated things like visualize and fun to play with and spaces and, you know, how do these all relate? It just doesn't really make much sense yet. So let's see. Um, first statement, I want you to believe that we all have been creative. Everybody. And I realized this actually when I watched some of the lectures of this fantastic uh, uh, scientist, Sir Ken Robinson, who's a researcher of creativity, a really successful one. And this is just one story I want to mention that he told. Very young children in a school, <coughs> preschool actually, you know, one of the child is making a little drawing, 
something like this. And the teacher is asking, what are you drawing, darling? I'm drawing a picture of God. Oh, but nobody knows how God looks like. They will in a minute. <laughs> and this is the marvel of small kids that they don't, they're not afraid of trying, whatever, however impossible it seems. They don't have this frustration that if they try and fail, something bad will happen. So they just give it a go, they try. Now, sorry, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> and this guy, Ken Robinson, argues that this is actually the, the, the fault of schooling, the fault of education. Because what you get in schools is this you're trying. If you succeed, you get a good grade. If you fail, you get a bad grade. Fair enough, seems very logical. The problem is that, you know, if you make up your mind before trying, you're like, there's a 50% of chance that I fail, that feels so bad. Oh, I don't try anyways, you know, it's just, I won't risk it, it's okay. And this state of mind really blocks you from trying. Whereas I think what is much more effective, I know what is much more effective, that if you reward trying, you fail, you succeed, you fail, you succeed. Sometimes you don't know, but basically what happens, you create lots of alternatives of solutions. And then you zoom out, you see all the options. So I tried all these things, and then, the question of success is much simpler. It's not all this frustration. Will it be good or will it be good? Because it's all in front of you. And it's just as simple, I think, as shopping. It's all there. Which one do I buy? Mm -hmm. OK, I take this one. It becomes very nice. Now, you know, you can say this is cool, but what is the reality that actually when you do this, many of us, they just, we just try once and you know, it doesn't look good and we stop. And this is something I learned in my education. Um, I studied architecture, and this is very typical, and then I was teaching architect students and design students. It's always the same. First year student comes in, draws the first line, doesn't look fantastic, oh, I'm not talented, <laughs> and gives up. And uh, in school, what we do, we force students for years, try hard, try hard, and they put all their stuff on the wall, they see it, and they get confidence, they get happier, they don't give up right away, and, you know, actually they become creative. You can learn this. Now, so there's a quite a few problems with this that I said, that you can tell me that you don't have many years of architecture education, <laughs> or we cannot put everybody on this planet two years of architecture education, and also drawing is hard, etc. So, here's, here is the secret. <laughs> At least this is how I see it. And this is very unprofessional, because I actually typed it, and I will show it and say it at the same time. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I think this is the secret. There is this really fragile moment when you create just one little thing. Do you enjoy that time point of creation? Do you enjoy that little piece of thing? Because if you like it, you will continue and create the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And then you have all these options, and you can choose, and it's much better. But if you don't like it, if you're frustrated and unhappy with your tiny little piece of creation, then you stop, you slow down, you fail. This is, I think, the secret. Now, Having said that, this is not that easy to accomplish. Um, it has to be easy to create, you want to get the flow. At the same time, it has to be beautiful. It has to be fantastic on the first touch, something that is makes you smile and makes you want to continue. It has to make sense and all these things together. And yes, so yesterday I, I, we had a nice dinner with the speakers and I, I talked to Chris from Australia, who's teaching people how to do presses, and he says this is an amazing moment at every workshop. The people come and they press the present button the first time after they did something and they go like, oh, wow. They get this experience of joy. They get the flow, they want to continue. <coughs> Sorry. Now, <laughs> and I think now you start to understand why are we doing this, why are we trying to mix up visual understanding with beauty because it helps you get into this process. Um, just personally, I wish if it happened sooner than pressing the present button the first time. So if anybody of you have ideas how to make it happen even sooner, please let us know. Okay, and of course, once your, your profession is creativity, I show you some pictures of Prezi's done at Prezi, the company, um, that are sometimes about brainstorming about ideas. This is, here we not, you know, people don't focus that much on how beautiful it is, because we already are confident, we know what we do. We don't need that constant feedback of reassuring ourselves that we do our job. We just like throw out the ideas. We like the empty canvas. You know, this is really typical prezzies from processes of how to develop the product, etc. You can take pictures, but there are the details you won't see. <laughs> and these are all 
But you see, you know, these are not really presentations. These are maps of ideas and relations that help people to get creative about their jobs. Um, so this is, I think this is why we do Prezi. And I want to also mention a few things like how we started it and where we are with the company because we use many of these methods um, at Prezi today. Yeah. By the way, oh, I will get back to that later, sorry. So we are three co-founders who started this company. I think five years ago, and I was the, this kind of artist, tinkering guy, and it was actually in Barcelona in 2000 when the first version using maps of uh, Barcelona and for an architectural practice called Mirayas that was done with a, with a friend of mine. <clears throat> and for many years I used it alone, I, I did present my art stuff in it, it was just like a little personal tool. And then a few years later I met my co-founder, first co-founder, Peter Halachi, who's a really critical thinker. He was the first one who said, Adam, this looks fascinating, but the way you build it, it really sucks. It's really bad. So he was the first one who was openly critical. So we, he said, and I felt like, this is fantastic. Let's do something better together. You seem very smart. And then uh, we did some prototypes. People really loved it, started to use it around the world. People came to us and said, we want to invest in your company. And you can imagine like a young Eastern European media artist and an academic guy and somebody comes, I want to invest. <laughs> we ran to Wikipedia, we said, oh, what is this investment startup? What do you do? And then we were more humble than that. So we actually came up and understood that we, under, we need a CEO, a third co-founder. So we found Swedish, Hungarian, Peter Arvai. And this is actually, this is not so interesting maybe for you in the Netherlands, but in, in Eastern Europe, this was very hard because we wanted a guy who is interested in the vision not in the big cars. But we found it with Peter, so we are really, really happy. And now, um, I think we have probably 29 million registered users. But what is more exciting, that every month, there is one and a half million new, new users registering on Prezi. So it's growing really rapidly. And <clears throat> there are lots of nice books, but there is an even really beautiful book, done by Hedwig, that we are very, very proud of. Um, but I also have to tell you that in South Korea, Prezi is really mainstream, so it gets into cartoons, soap operas, TV, very, like the prime minister candidates were using Prezi on TV to pitch for office, etc. Um, and they make jokes about Prezi in like daily paper cartoons, it's very funny. <laughs> yes, and all the good press, and this is exciting, but what is much more exciting, um, I still use Prezi, but the first time I felt really excited, and I think this helps you to understand also our vision more. This guy a few years ago emailed us. <coughs> this was a long, long time ago. He's a 70-year-old firefighter, and he said, from Canada, thank you for doing Prezi, I feel creative again. I was so happy. And you know, this was the first time I felt that this is something of real value for real people beyond all the new media, new technology hipsters. And that really gives us motivation, people like him, that we can extend this really joyful experience of creativity beyond those who already are into it. And yes, like celebrities use it, this is Bono, the little small guy. <laughs> but what is just as exciting is these are like kids from Singapore, I think, that I guess some of you know that it's really successful in education and small children just love it, they just use it, they don't have any issues, they just like go blah, 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 blah. And that's really nice for us. Now, some stories about how we work and where we are, because it might be interesting, maybe because some of you may have companies. So I think we managed, because we really believe so much in this vision, we actually try to make our own company into such a company where creativity matters and, um, and where ideas matter. And just some data, so this is more or less an older picture of how many we were. We have been doubling the people every year. We are 160 people now with an office in San Francisco and Budapest. So it's growing very nicely into a nice business. And, and what we understood that to, to create a product that makes people creative and communicate visually uh, about their ideas, it's very hard. Nobody knows the answers. Like I cannot just tell to a junior designer and say, if you do this, people will get creative. I don't know. It's very hard. So we need really creative people. And what we did to achieve that, we created a really, I think, a company that creative people like. And one of this is about, oh, sorry. Yes, all the beautiful people working at Prezi. So Prezi is a very, very 
transparent company where all the management has high integrity and all the decisions are really, really talked through. So everybody, everybody understands everything. Nobody's told, just do your job, we don't tell you why. And of course, you know, creative people would hate that. The other thing that um, we work a lot for our values that are, that I will get back to quite soon, that are, I think, quite motivating for people who are in there for the creativity and not just for the salary. And office and space and architecture. This is actually coming back to the first point because it really matters how spaces help you to get creative. Um, we just moved to a nice new space in San Francisco, but I, I say a few more words about the Budapest one because it's a little treasure that we found in the city, unused. And it's really cheap, but beautiful. And the reason why it's cheap because it doesn't have parking for the cars of the managers. <laughs> so we could get it for cheap. And uh, it used to be a telecommunication center where you know, people plugged phone calls to each other. You go like, I want to talk to number three. <laughs> Here you go. And uh, even today, the little angels on the walls have little phone headsets hanging from their necks. It's beautiful. And more or less, this is how it looks. One of the big holes, but there are more spaces that are really amazing. And uh, of course, it's like a nice playground. And when visitors come, they ask, so does the management go on those bridges and see what the employees do? Yes, sure, the management goes there and controls everybody. But you get the idea, I think. Nice courtyard, etc. Now, one more. And we're going to build a really beautiful venue for conferences. Not as beautiful, but we will do our best. But here's one detail that I think you might find interesting. What we also do, for a moment, when you have a really tough challenge to solve, you're thinking very hard, and you don't, it doesn't, you, know, you, don't, you don't really know what to do, then suddenly something unexpected happens, like a bird flies to your nose and hits you, you get the thing. It's a really typical thing, you just get too much into something and you cannot see outside. So what we do, we will hide and place curious and strange objects through the office that you watch, you don't understand what they are, and they maybe trigger something in you. And this is one, one, one of the developers that found in Trash. We don't know what it is. If you rotate it, these two things don't touch each other. It's very beautiful. It's very curious. <laughs> we don't have to know what it is, but we will place it into a surprising place in the whole office. And we will have much more of these. Um, so 160 people. This is insane. No, like, why do you need all these people? Prezi is ready. I am just presenting and all these books. <laughs> now, the truth is that it's really exciting because what we do, we try to learn from reality. We, we try to understand what, how people respond to our ideas, to our product. Do they find it beautiful what they create? Do they feel creative? Do they get frustrated that something not working? And we, then we come up with new ideas and we create this cycle. And this is why price is changing slowly every day a little bit. Now this might be annoying for some really heavy users, but what we hope and actually what we see from the usage is that for the majority this helps because we understand people more and we can provide things that are better and better. Um, the other side of this, which is quite exciting, going back to creativity in companies, that what the management does at Prezi, that we create these small teams of mixed skills, coders, engineers, etc. They get a really high level goal, which is very exciting and measurable, so they know if they succeed or not. And they can try. They can try and fail, try and fail. For like six months, they just try and fail. You remember, like in the first ring, like the kids do. And then in the end, you know, we can assess the whole process. But they can be creative for a very long period of time and find solutions that nobody knew before. And the last bit I want to mention that, at least in Hungary, but also in the neighboring countries, there are not that many startups, internet startups, that grew this big. So, you know, we are getting invited to lots of conferences about internet technology startups and also governments and European Union is like looking at companies like Prezi, like, hi guys, you want to have more like you? <laughs> so we use this to create cultural impact and, you know, we, of course we try to help young entrepreneurs because in Eastern Europe this is a very, very uncommon thing to start a business actually. We try to help the Roma as much as we can because there is sadly a lot of racism in that part of the world so we need to stand up for these values. Um, there are no company cars at Prezi, but we have our own official bike repairman. I guess in the Netherlands, this is completely uninteresting because everybody does it. <laughs> in Hungary, this is completely unheard of. <laughs> and uh, yes, so we also uh, participate a lot in the Pride, which again, in that part of the world is not as trivial and here that companies can do that. And 
So we are at 29 million registered users. If you think about this and how I started, uh, why I think it's actually important for people to get more creative because the value of remembering data will be less and less. You know, they will not get fantastic jobs if they are not good at combining and creating new things. Essentially what we are after is that everybody who's thinking or studying, going to work, studying at work and probably more and more using computers, should probably try Prezi once. If they don't like it, it's okay. So, you know, I don't want to have this feeling that I want to force it on everybody. But this, the chance that they try it and we can show them that it's actually nice and joyful to be creative, that will be fantastic. And the motivation is very clear. As I started with this whole thing, it's in our hand, it's up to us what do we do this this planet, and it's up to us how do we build our skills to envision these futures. So I think it's actually a shared interest. <laughs> And sorry for the last comment, we actually are still growing, so if you know fantastic people who are creative, you can work at Prezi. <laughs> but most interestingly, I hope I could convince some of you who said it doesn't make you creative, and, or maybe you, who you already like Prezi, maybe you get some new ideas and I could inspire you to come up with new things in Prezi. Thank you so much. <laughs>